Man. <laughs> played in this event and have gone on to obviously finish high school and, and commit and play in college. 17 players have played in this event and have gone on to have their name called in the MLB Amateur Draft. So it already, like so many perfect game events, it already has such a rich history. Before we show the lineup, a, a couple of quick updates. A win earlier today for the Atlanta Braves scout team over Warriors Baseball Academy. 13 to nothing, and Dinger's Elite had a hard-fought battle. They jumped out by a 4-1 to lead over Warriors Baseball Academy, but came up short by a score of 7-5. to Those two games were played earlier today. Let's meet that Dinger's Elite lineup because there's some names you're, you're going to want to keep an eye on, especially right in the middle of it all with Chase Alonzo for the Dinger's Elite. Cole Roberts is at the top of the order for this team out of Buford, Georgia. Cooper Pluff bats second. It's Griffin Treadwell. Chase Alonzo, as we mentioned, he can hit, he can pitch, a really talented player. Another player that's creeping into the rankings is Andrew Yee. You'll see him bat appropriately in that four spot. Austin Dowdy, Don Fernandez, Logan Peralta. Holden Mears, Ryder Cole, Gianni Gandhi, one through nine. Gandhi will work behind the plate for Dingers Elite. Nick Dowdy is their head coach. They've got a great facility. A wonderful spot where they do their work. And then on the other side, A.J. Hickox will take the rock, and he will roll for this Brave Scout team. A fun time to see A.J. go to work. This is like a lot of players at this age. They, they play multiple positions, and they play them very well. A.J. from Jessup, Georgia. You can see his numbers, you know, minimal numbers this year as a pitcher. Has been doing things with a bat in his hands or on the mound for several years. He's an eighth grader at 2028. When we ask A.J. about his dream school, he makes it clear it's Georgia or it's LSU. Claiming and sharing that his travel ball team has helped him grow not only on the field but off the field. A lot of experiences and memories, getting to know a lot of folks. Hickox is the pitcher. His dad is Allen taking this one in. And like most two-way players, he loves the work of Shohei Otani, who will be back on the mound for the Dodgers next year. Cole Roberts to lead off our game of the week. Thanks for finding us on this Saturday. And away we go with a pitch that runs up and in to Cole. Over the outside, back to the screen it goes. Cole playing in the second base spot today. Out of Loganville, Georgia, 2028, he'll go to Walnut Grove High School as that one misses outside and off the plate. The son of Rachel and Luke, and he's got a couple of older sisters, Madison and Taylor, and an older brother, Caleb, the baby of the bunch. And as he plays second base, he loves a third baseman. Loves watching Austin Riley play as that one runs up and in. Three balls and one strike, the count on Cole. He's got some old tournament awards in his PG resume. Done a nice job in the travel ball world. As he takes high, and that's how you want to start it. I guess if you're going to say which team would be favored to win in this game, and I say this very casually at the 14U age group, you've got to understand that it would be this Atlanta Brave scout team. But it all starts and ends with that kind of patience and with the work on the mound. And so any runs the Stingers elite team can get early would be very important. Is that strike one to Cooper Pluff? Cooper from Decula, Georgia. Ninth grader, a freshman of 2027. He's at North Gwinnett High School. As that breaking ball is high, the son of James and Kelly.
Really good speed if he gets on, has a strong arm. We've seen him pitch as well. With an outstanding slider. And he makes it, he makes it clear, does, does Cooper Pluff, that I plan on growing into my power. There's a lot more to come. Left-handed bat, slightly open stance in the box on a beautiful day. Fights that one off back of short into shallow left field. Hangs up nicely out there for Brooks DeRosa. The left fielder will introduce you to the entire Atlanta Braves scout team starting lineup here in just a bit. But if that name DeRosa sounds familiar, it is a familiar one. Former Major Leaguer Mark DeRosa, who obviously is a personality on MLB Network now and was the manager of the United States national team in the World Baseball Classic last year. Let's meet Griffin Treadwell. Tall, rangy first baseman. Also from Decula, Georgia. Abraham Christian Academy. He's an eighth grader at 2028. Is that one is out the uh, offsides or outside, I should say. Georgia, North Carolina. A couple of schools he'd be interested in someday. Already six feet, four inches tall, 180 pounds. I think somebody stood on the scale with him when they, they shared that 180. He is lean. He will be 180. I don't know if he's 180 yet. As Griffin draws a walk, a couple of walks in this inning, so Hickok's trying to find the strike zone. And an opportunity to see Chase Alonso. This is a well-rounded player. Chase, you see him with the bat in his hands. We'll see him on the mound as well. Strike thrower and a chance to face probably the favorite to win this entire event. So a great opportunity. Great players, they look for opportunities like these. And for Chase, this really is one. CeeLo, his mates call him, from Tiger, Georgia. Raven County High School, he's an eighth grader. He'd love to play. Jack Caglione's school, who, by the way, is just having an amazing couple of weeks. Over the outside corner, pretty pitch for a strike. At the University of Florida, that's Chase's dream school. Seventy-six, seventy-seven miles an hour from this right arm at this point. Some of the velocity we're seeing. Seen a curveball into the high 50s so a nice range but he's only thrown one breaking ball there's another breaking ball and keeps that in his back pocket pulls it out at the right time outstanding 12 to 6 spin on it just grabbed a little bit of that inside corner the one two it was away that time, and it's fouled off. Couple of runners on, both walks. Back-to-back -back breaking balls, 58, then 61 miles an hour. Alonzo's favorite player, Trey Turner. He's a shortstop by trade when he's not pitching. Really setting up way off the plate is Dominic Rossi. Hit his spot there. Two and two the count. Got him. So this Dingers team has arrived with a, a, the right amount of patience and a nice job by Chase. He didn't spin out at all. This is his fourth, fifth breaking ball of the inning and moved just enough to make it appear as if he put an effort out there to get out of the way. That's all you have to do. This is great shot with just one out, a wonderful chance here. Left-handed bat of Andrew Yee, the extra hitter in this game as he takes high. 1-0 the count. Yee from Duluth, Georgia, 2028 at Greater Atlanta Christian School. And Greg Maddox as he hit the inside corner with a little bit of a comebacker. Yee, the son of Sang and Nancy, learning from his coaches and teammates and a lot of repetition at practice that he has just grown and developed a lot as a player. 
Breaking ball hits the outside corner, one and two the count. Wrap this one around the plate, as you can see, stayed on top of it. Difficult pitch to command that straight down break, if you think about it. Two and two the count. Slightly open stance, left-handed batter, 2-2 two, two skied. And that infield fly rule will be in play. Two outs in the inning, that's a huge out there with the bases full. Into the glove of Isaiah Candor, who pitched in the game earlier today. Pitched quite well, took a couple of scoreless innings, struck out four. Now out there playing second base, here's Austin Dowdy. The left fielder, number 27 on that jersey. On the inside corner. Michael Waller is behind home plate. Christopher Capini is out calling the bases. You can see him in your shot right now. Gowdy hits it hard on the ground. Back over the pitcher's mound. Bobbled, recovers, and flips in time for the out. And a nice job there by Isaiah. Coming back behind the bag at second base, Leo Garcia, with great instincts, got to the bag and covered things, and they cleaned things up. It was a big chance for that Dinger squad, but they come up empty. The Brave scout team will swing it next. Would have loved to have had a couple of runs to work with. But for Chase, such a deep history for him and how much big work he has done, this is a great chance. As a, as a hitter last year, he played in 36 games to Chase, had an OPS nearly 1,100. Those minimal numbers pitching-wise to start the year. But Isaiah Candor leads things off. Big fan of Francisco Lindor, the Mets shortstop, as he takes a strike over the outside corner. Zay, his buddies call him. That's his nickname, out of McDonough, Georgia. He's an eighth grader, a rising eighth grader. Would love to play at LSU or Georgia Tech someday. As that one's just off the plate outside. Isaiah last year had an 11.37 OPS in 65 PG games. 51 stolen bases and only caught three times. Right back to the screen with an aggressive hack from the left-handed batter. 
They had three long balls last year. Was patient with a ton of walks, had a 556 on base percentage. Isaiah, the son of Cabrina and Sidney. Quick call of time. Michael Waller is our home plate umpire as he calls time there. From behind home plate. Christopher Capini is out calling the bases. Fastball zipped in there. Good firm fastball. By the way, from so far, Chase, we're seeing 85, 86 miles an hour in a 14U game. So welcome to a good challenge. Brave scout team looking to deal with some velocity today. And they're on it. Fouled back to the screen. Isaiah's older brother, Emperor, is 23 years old. He gives a great perspective on where travel ball has helped him grow. I mean, really transparent, honest perspective. And the 2-2. Two -two. That one's outside. Three and two, the count. And here's exactly what Isaiah said when I asked him, hey, what about travel ball? How has it helped you out? He said, it helps me understand that someone is always working hard. They're coming to take my spot. That makes me work every day. The 3-2. Line drive left field. Drives that one toward the alley. Up against the wall it goes. He took the velo. He shot it the other way. He hit it hard. Good effort out there by Austin Dowdy, certainly. The double for Isaiah to start things off. Leo Garcia, perfect game select festival. Swings and he misses over the top of that one. Talked about his dad helping to provide the leadership. His dad, Carl, you'll hear from Carl. Chicho, the nickname that Leo Garcia proudly shares with his friends. Plays with that Atlanta Braves scout team and enjoys his time there. He's at North Gwinnett Middle School when he's in the classroom. That's a 2028 Chicho. A strong Dominican family ties. His mom is Amanda. Out of Rawlings' finest in the field last year. A great defender that time. Breaking ball over the outside corner. And Leo. Off the plate. Didn't dramatically work and move around. He just presented that pitch where it was delivered. Because of the lack of movement, he got the call. That one dives just a little bit below. Boy, that's sharp. Just a hard, firm breaking ball just off the plate. To Dom Rossi. Dominic from Marietta. He's an eighth grader at Eastside Christian Middle School. He'd love to play at UConn or Tennessee or Georgia Tech someday. Laid on that fastball. Again, the fastball, 85, 86 miles an hour. He's the younger brother to Bella, his 16-year-old sister. And he's the big brother. I'm sure Isaac looks up to Dominic quite a bit as that one misses outside. <laughs> and if you want a fun name, as in who does Dominic look to watch a video of, maybe not catch live games because he can't anymore, he loves David Ortiz, Big Poppy. And, and look at Dominic right on top of the plate, just like Big Poppy was. Good lively fastball misses low. He said, I loved watching how electric he was, how he played the game. He said, the one thing I've learned from watching a lot of his video is to keep rhythm in the barrel wall hitting. Those are Dominic's words. That's ball four. Ah. 
84, 85 miles an hour, that last at bat. And here's Thomas Davis. Gainesville, Georgia native, Gainesville Middle School. Scout team will try to pinch runner out there to run for their catcher. Pretty breaking ball just off the outer path. Leo gets a chance to go out and run. Leo just struck out looking, Leo Garcia, and so he will run in this spot for Rossi. Not a deep bench, so you can have a courtesy runner, especially if it's a man who just made an out. And that's exactly what's going on. A couple of runners out there for Thomas Davis. Zach and Lindsay, his parents. Hits it hard. Really turned it loose on the ground. One run is in. He was right on top of that breaking ball. And the Braves strike first. They lead it by a score of one to nothing. Lightning quick bat. That of Thomas Davis. Got the foot down, quick through the zone, even though that was a little bit below waist high. Managed to keep that flat swing, firm swing, just shot that five hole, and it's a base hit. We'll talk about cashing in, you have a double, you've got a walk. And this is big stuff for this right-hander. It heads to the backstop, will it cost him a run? It will. With the Trey Turner-like slide coming on home, Leo Garcia, who was running. Just trying to keep the pressure on. And with that kind of pressure, and it was played on a backhand. I know the man working behind the plate will tell you, Gianni Gandhi. I play that one. Nine times out of ten, ten times out of, out of eleven, I got that one. Breaking ball right down the middle, one and one the count to Micah Vaughn. He's at in-town community school where he's an eighth grader. It's that one hard out towards second base, fielding, firing. In time for the out is Cole Roberts. Got it down off the end of the bat, had that good firm sound, but it died just a bit without completely squaring it up. Made a good pass at the ball. But Vaughn is a 4-3 ground out. A couple of big outs if they can stop it here. Keep that runner at third, that's a positive step. Daniel Biondo hopes not. He'd love to drive it in with two outs. He lives up north in Cumming, Georgia. Oh, it's good looking stuff from that right arm, isn't it? That is polished stuff. Daniel's at Denmark High School. He's a rising freshman at 2027. Back-to-back -back pretty pitches, 0-2, the count. He's a catcher. The man he loves to watch, a catcher as well, JT Real Muto. Love the way he catches. He said how fast he transfers the ball, and it makes it easy to throw out runners. In the left field, it's a base hit. Some two-out damage for Biondo. Well, that's got to feel good, and it hurts on the other side. He picked on a breaking ball, was ready for it. Caden Frederick. Biondo out front of him. Frederick takes a fastball strike over the outside corner. Frederick, the right fielder. From Milton, Georgia. He's homeschooled as far as his academics go. He'd love to go to Tennessee someday. Hayden loves Christian Yelich. He loves Juan Soto. You see a little Yelich build there. That long, lean frame like Christian Yelich. Runner moves in the scoring position. 
Frederick sharing with us that he's put a lot of work in this offseason, and the area where he hopes it shows itself the most is his hitting. He said, I take care of my academics as a homeschooled student, which has allowed me to put in more time in the cage, more time with the bat in my hands. After a quick meeting, he'll get ready to go back to work. Moved himself into the rankings. That meant a lot to him. He's a high follow player now in the perfect game rankings. That one skips to the backstop. Runner moves to third. And for Gandy, it's it, at times, and it is big stuff on the mound, but it's appearing too hot to handle sometimes, that mid-80s fastball. Two and two the count. True RBI chance now. Nice job blocking that up. Was well, squared that body up, put the catcher's mitt down, closed the hole. That was a pretty block. Dinger's elite program based in Buford, Georgia. 36 college commits. Names like Bubba Coleman, Trevor Condon. That one is high, that's ball four. Isn't it funny in his scouting report as he heads to first base, Caden said to us that in my scouting report, I'm a guy who will get on base. Whether it's by a hit, being hit by a pitch, or a walk, I will find my way on. And that's exactly what he did there with the walk. Braves up three to nothing, have runners on first and third. Darren Sutton and our production team, thanks for hanging out with us for our game of the week. Evan Ben Savage, the center fielder. Runner took off, takes second base. I'm going to just stir things up on the base pad. Stolen base for Caden. Ben Savage lives in Alpharetta, Georgia. He's a freshman, Lambert High School. They gather on the mound, quick conversation. Told you we had the opportunity to spend time with several members of the Dingers Elite program this week, specifically Nick Dowdy, their head coach. You know, you visit their website and you see experience, support, and space to grow. And they have more of a fun marketing mantra out front, which is show up, be consistent, work hard, hit Dingers. I love that. Good looking uniforms, fun logos, great program. 11,000 square foot facility in Buford with all the, the best technology, nine batting cages, three pitching lanes. They've got a hit tracks. So they've got four outdoor fields as well. This Dinger's Elite program. And Savage takes a curveball, one and one the count. Evan, the son of Greg and Nicole. He said, I've improved at the plate. More aggressive now. Try to make things happen early in counts. Let's see if with that in mind, as he steps out, if he's dialed into swinging. Well-rounded athlete. He's ran track. He's played football, basketball as well. Excellent block with that runner on second and third. Evan recently went to Clemson's baseball camp. One best pitcher at that camp. He's won some PG MVPs. Basketball award winner. Runs to 200 in track. And set the school record there. What a good take on a sharp diving breaking ball. Three and one the count. That's high, that's ball four. That was great, he came back. He saw Evan coming back to home play with just a little quick conversation with Brooks DeRosa. Here's what I saw. You could hear a little holler from the crowd. Come on, Brooksy, they say. DeRosa is an eighth grader out of North Gwinnett Middle School. Went around on a breaking ball that time. Oh, 
Owen won the count. Braves up three to nothing. Bases loaded for Brooks. Now really putting his nose on the baseball is Gandy behind the plate. Had a couple skip by him earlier. Brooks' mom is Heidi. Dad is Mark. Baseball's Mark DeRosa. And his older sibling is Gabby, who's 21. Brooks shoots that one foul. Loves watching Nolan Arenado play. Bobby Witt as well. Rosa pounds that one right out in front of home plate. He's hustling up the line, trying to beat it out with an underhanded flip. Cole Roberts in time for the out. So they get to Rosa this time. We'll see him next time up. But in the meantime, they get things going early. This brave scout team brought their bats. They brought a good eye as well. And because of that, they come up with three early in our game of the week, aggressively running the base pads. The Atlanta Braves scout team three. The Dingers Elite Squad, nothing. Game of the week through one. Back to action, 1-0 the camp. They're playing quick and fast. Don Fernandez is the hitter. D-A-H-N, Don Fernandez, the shortstop. And he's a good enough athlete to hop up on the mound his play as well. He's had some fun influences. Do you folks remember Jose Contreras? World Series hero with the White Sox. Right for the Yankees, of course, everyone remembers him with the Yankees and the Phillies. Well, Jose is one of the men that has been able to teach him baseball, teach him pitching. He's his pitching coach. And Don's learned how to control in tough situations from a guy like Jose. Calmly work through mechanic changes. It's been a, a wonderful influence. I know Jose is really involved in the future of the game. I love hearing young men tell me that, though. It's not a, a marketing release somewhere I read. It's this young man in his own word sharing in communications that he's meant a lot. Pitch away, tried to pull it, lifted it to the left side, though, up and under. And Michael Vaughn is the third baseman. They get Don Fernandez this time. You've got to be a good athlete if you can pitch and also play short. That one rode last minute. Just a little bit of backspin on it and was underneath that baseball. That ball, he'll tell you, better shot into right field where it would be hit on a line and probably a base hit. Logan Peralta's opportunity to hit. Right. Auburn, Georgia. Freshman, Decula High School. Two and one the count. Art and Anna, his parents. Roger. 
Hits it hard on the ground, a couple of steps over to his left as Leo Garcia makes it look easy out there. Two outs in the inning, one in the air and one on the ground. We'll walk off Logan Peralta with this quick note. He's a 3.8 in the classroom. He's already taken an AP class in his freshman year. Gifted class is good for Logan and what he is doing as a student. Holden Mears now. Slow spinning breaking ball. Splits the plate to Holden. Just to get me over, show the pitch, establish it, get it in the hitter's mind. It doesn't have to be a snapdragon right out of the gates. He goes back to back with it. Now he's got options after this one. He can spike that same pitch into the dirt. And he calls for another breaking ball. Let's watch. Right, through the same spot. And it's rolled out toward third. And he's on. So a two strike breaking ball, better said an 0 2 breaking ball. And he went back to the same one. You could see how Dom Rossi called it behind home plate, just put the, the two fingers down. I think this pitch, just a guess, I think this pitch spiked. That means Rossi would have to block it, but I think this pitch spiked is probably strike three. Now, to be fair, he didn't hit it hard at all. But Mears will take it. He's on with the base hit. Fastball over the outside corner to Ryder Cole. He's from Beaufort, Georgia. He'd love to play for the North Carolina Tar Heels someday. Dustin and Britt, his parents. And he's in the hole 0 and 2. When he played football, he won the most touchdowns award. When he played basketball, he was the team leader award winner. And he scored the most runs for his baseball team as well. One ball, two strike the count. Comes that one out in front of the plate. This is not an easy play. But he made it. Leo Garcia, after Holden Mears had kind of a swinging bunt base hit, Ryder Cole almost did the same thing. Leo can play some shortstop, can he? Glad to have you with us for our game of the week. Three to nothing to score the Atlanta Braves scout team. 14 UH group on top. But 15U events at the Greater Atlanta Open and the 15U WWBA as a 14U team? Carl explains the tough schedules. Very aggressive. Um, you mentioned the 15U. We, we you know, uh, and we were speaking before, These are the, this is the group of kids that um, in their high school, young high school careers, they'll be playing varsity baseball very early. And... Um, and they will always play up, meaning the, the people they're going to play against in the next few years are going to be 17, 15, 16-year-olds. And they're, as of a 14-year-old right now group, they're as good as any uh, 15. I, that's my personal opinion. Um, they're as good as any 15-year-old right now. Um, and this will give them a chance to get used to the steady, uh, bigger, stronger player until they catch up. But uh, this is a talented group, and they can handle it, and that's what we're about. We're not really about the uh, trying to win that ring or trophy. That, that was great when you're younger. It's phenomenal. 
But um, this is uh, this is a, a highly highly talented group that we're trying to challenge. You can hear that entire interview, by the way, tomorrow night on MLB Round Trip with Perfect Game, the only show devoted to amateur baseball on MLB Network Radio. Follows Sunday Night Baseball every single week on MLB Network Radio. Great conversations with Carl Garcia and with Nick Dowdy, the head coach of the Dingers Elite Program. Had a chance to, to talk with both of those. And my one-on-one -on -one with Chris Bryant, PG alum, PG All-American, Colorado Rocky star and Cubs World Series winner. Many years back, Evan Litsky gets the chance to go to work from Ackworth, Georgia. He goes to Mount Perrin Christian School. He takes a fastball just off the plate. Good 0-2 pitch, though. Vanderbilt, LSU, his dream schools. New to the Brave Scout team. My teammates, my coaching, they've improved my game. They've pushed me. Travel ball in general, he said to me, has exposed me to the best baseball competition in the country, which is constantly improving my skill set. That's strike three, fastball over the outside corner. 84 miles an hour and a called third strike. Michael Waller rung him up, the home plate umpire. Well, that's a pretty pitch. And Gandy did a nice job again, quietly getting out there. Not too much movement set up early to allow the home plate umpire Waller to get a good long look at that pitch. Owen won the count of breaking ball. As we go back to the top of the order. Isaiah Kander. Isaiah doubled. Took a pitch up and away, a fastball up and away, hit it just as hard. The other way, one hopping the wall out there in left field. And so he sees a breaking ball. Sign of respect, one and one the count. Zay's a state level track runner. The four by 100 and the 100. And a basketball player as well. Such kind words when he communicated with us about his mom, Cabrina. Three and one the count. That's ball four. He said, and I quote, my mom inspires me. Because even when she's tired or doesn't feel like doing something, she sacrifices time and effort to get it done no matter the consequence. It's pure sacrifice. This pushes me in sports. This pushes me in student. If, if she can work that hard, then I can too. Love the, love the connectedness for Isaiah. Good for him. The parent in me says that anyway. Now we've watched Leo Garcia, the select festival athlete, play short today and do a nice job. Got a big arm. Last summer, he threw 84 miles an hour from the outfield in events. We're almost a year past that now. He's three quarters of a year, so you got to figure that arm's getting bigger and stronger. Right center. Saying drive that ball to right center. He does take a shot toward right center field. That one is down for a base hit. Didn't hit it hard, but dropped it firmly in front of Holden Mears, the center fielder. Okay, so wait a minute. I'm watching a game like this. I hear in the background the voice say, come on now, drive that ball to right center. And the hitter drives the ball to right center. It's one thing to be coachable. It's another thing to have the skill set to deliver on a pretty swing, a line drive to right center field and a base hit for the Select Festival alum, Leo Garcia. Isaiah obviously sprinted all the way around to third. Dominic Posey walked his first time up. And I should say Dominic Rossi. He's a catcher, so I named him Posey. Dom takes outside. Now let's talk. Really enjoys catching, but it was not an easy transition. He calls it the greatest challenge he's ever had to overcome, becoming a catcher. Just two years ago, August of 22, he started catching as he waves through that one. 
He said the, the, the experience was none, and my experience was, these are his words, horrible. He said, to become a game-ready catcher, I worked on catching drills, getting in better shape, more flexibility for months and months. I started being able to finally catch games in the spring. So August to the spring, and he was comfortable catching. Leo, by the way, moved up to second base on that pitch just a bit ago. So runners are on second and third. Calls himself a four-tool player that can also pitch. Obviously, speed would be the one thing he's not saying. I'm the best in the world at. I'm very proud of everything else he can do. Hitting, has a strong arm. That one skips away. That should play to run. Easy opportunity for Isaiah to come on down and score that run. And another one for the Brave scout team. Four to nothing is the score. I yeah, just held on to that breaking ball a little bit too much. Fastball's been anywhere from 82 up to 86 miles an hour. One out, runner at third. Swing and a miss. Heavy, late dive on that one. That's strike three. What a wicked pitch. And I... And I think you're seeing the same thing I am, right? If you're watching at home, understanding this is a really gifted Brave Scout team. And in almost any game in this uh, in this event, they'd be the favorite. But the stuff for Alonzo is really, really positive. And it's fun to watch, stuff like that. Breaking ball over the outside corner to Thomas Davis, who singled in a run back in the first inning. Very back of the batter's box. There's inconsistency for Chase, certainly, but he's 14 years old. It's the kind of arm and athleticism you can certainly work with. And as we said earlier, when we first came on the air, what a great chance for him to deal with this very deep lineup. One and two, the count. off a breaking ball slow roller out towards second base Cole Roberts on a 4-3 ground out brings his team back into the dugout and the Dingers elite squad with a chance to hit enjoying the 14U Georgia State Championship and the work of Chase Alonzo on the mound with a very very bright future he and his mates down by a score of four to nothing here at East Cobb it's the Brave Scout team up four may be finding Perfect Game TV for the very first time. And if you are, thank you, by the way, tell a friend. We're streaming the best content in amateur baseball 24-7 and 365. Games, features, docking the QR code. We also right now want to take the time to remind you, get that app, put it on all your smart devices, 
But then if you have Roku TV, first of all, go ahead and grab it if you don't. But if you have Roku TV, you can find our channel at 237. Put us on the big TV in your family room. It's Perfect Game TV. We are the home for amateur baseball. Dinger's Elite. Getting ready to go to work here. We are minus an umpire for just a moment. And now we'll go back to work. Michael Waller says, let's play. A little greeting. That was classy, cool to see by Gianni Gandhi, the catcher. Stands near the front of the box, left-handed hitting catcher. Who doesn't love that in the scouting world? Lights that one off to the left side. From Decatur, Georgia, is a homeschooled student. He's in eighth grade this year, is Johnny. G, as his mates call him, takes up and away. A lot of the same schools that he dreams of. A lot of young athletes in the, in the south in Atlanta. LSU, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Georgia. Gets extended on that one. Skies that one towards shallow right field. Looking up into the Georgia sky is Kalen Frederick, who makes the play for the first out of the inning. Got him just a little bit out front. There's a leg kick there, foot came down, and just underneath that one, leaking out front just a little bit. Strike throwing, you can bet that's the goal of, of this man, A.J. Hickox, get his team back in the dugout, let him go to work. Cole Roberts' second opportunity. Patiently walked back in the first inning, was stranded. It was that first inning where we thought, all right, this Dinger squad is going to be able to shake things up early. There was a walk, a fly out to left, a walk and a hit batsman. Wasn't a hit, but the bases were loaded with one out. And A.J. Hickox managed to work out of it. Two and one the count. Roberts has moved up onto the mound and has really evolved as a pitcher, hitting now where the count is two and two. He's changed his arm slot when pitching, three quarters arm slot. He so said, when I do find myself called upon, my command has really improved a bunch. This 4.0 student in the classroom takes up and away, three and two the count. Blew a fastball right by him. And that is the first strikeout for A.J. Hickox. A little bit of late life. You could see it start outer half and run down the middle. Just enough. Cooper Bluff. Good idea, Cooper. Cooper shared his pronunciation with us with the broadcast team, P-L-U-F-F. -F. There is a man who played in the major leagues, who's quite the content creator now, played for quite some time, Trevor Plouffe. He has a more French way of saying it, diving attempt out there. Great effort by Isaiah, but Candor couldn't come up with it. And for Plouffe, it's a base hit. That's the second hit of the game. With a stinger squat. We well, didn't try to do too much, did he? You saw the hips lead the hands. A circus-like effort out there. And ended up rolling on out to Kalen Frederick in right field. Some two-out noise. Let's see what they can make of it. Griffin Treadwell. 1-0 the count to Griffin. He played middle school basketball along with baseball. And along the way, one of his instructors, his teachers, and his coach, Ty Lewis, has moved him really in the right direction. Taught him about hustle and heart when playing the game of baseball. We're talking about Griffin Treadwell, of course. 
So he's taught me to have a plan during each at bat to focus on the pitches I know I can hit. And by the way, inspires me to be a student by encouraging me to stay on top of my schoolwork. And most importantly, he said, he challenges me to be the best young man I can and encourages me to grow my faith. That's Griffin Treadwell giving a lot of credit to Ty Lewis. Mr. Lewis, well done. Love hearing stories like that. And there's the plan. There's the patience. Waiting for his pitch, and he never got his pitch. So, Coach Lewis, he did well by you that time. Couple of runners on again with two outs. One of the most dangerous hitters, one of the most gifted all around athletes on the field. With a chance to knock some runs in and chase Alonzo. Carl Garcia out to have a conversation with A.J. Hickox. We were talking about that schedule that they'll take on this year. This is the Georgia State Championship at the 14U age group. Soon they'll be in the 15U Greater Atlanta Open, 15U. They'll play in the 14U Southeast Elite, 14U National Elite, 14U World Series, and then the 15U WWBA National Championships. That is a gauntlet event. Hundreds and hundreds of teams. All of them 15U teams. That's twice that's happened. A breaking ball in that didn't break and that has hit Chase Alonzo, and that loads the bases. This is exactly what occurred back in the first inning. Hickox worked out of it that time. Yeah, there's not, there's not the, the armor either. There's not a whole bunch of protective gear. Andrew Yi, who moved over to first base, takes high and inside, 1-0 and oh, the count. National Honor Society, Beta Club member. Tries to dump that one into center field, but can't do it. There's Leo Garcia with a leaping grab over his shoulder, saving a couple of runs and keeping it at a 4 to nothing score. He with a good approach. Watch Leo, watch this first step. Boom, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. Oh, he did. Over the shoulder, the game of the week. Moments like that, four to nothing.
stuff, and we've talked about Nick Dowdy and the facilities that his 14U team has the opportunity to work with. Logan Peralta goes to work on the mound. With a four to nothing number, hit hard on the ground. Ranging over to his left is Don Fernandez. The shortstop turns Micah Vaughn into a 6-3 out. Logan from Auburn, Georgia, as he works. He's 14 years old and about 10 months on that age. We've seen him at more than 30 perfect game events. Boy, a closet full of old tournament team award honors. Dozens. As that one runs low and inside. As a matter of fact, he was the most valuable player of last year's 14U Fall Georgia Championship. Most valuable player. And then just prior to that was the most valuable pitcher of the 14U PG Southeast Fall World Series. So for Peralta, it's been a wonderful start to his young travel ball career. Turns that one into a walk. Daniel Biondo, who had singled in a run back in the first inning, is on. Caden Frederick. Way inside and off the plate. And I think I said Caden. Kalen Frederick. That one actually went right through the wickets there. As Kalen spun and had to move out of the way. One and one the count. The emphatic call of Michael Waller. Caden walked, he stole a base back in the first inning. One and two the count. Caden last year found his way into 44 perfect game games and really performed, had a 519 on base percentage. I got him. So you've got a walk and a hit batter with runners on first and second for the Atlanta Braves scout team. Just got inside of that one, turned it into a cutter that he didn't want to throw. So Logan now with the chance against Evan Van Savage. Van Savage walked back in the first inning. Owen won the count to Evan. Evan played in 52 perfect game games back in 2023. That's a terror on the base pads. Had 32 stolen bases in 33 attempts. And it's easy to do that when you get on base 55% of the time. 17 of his 40 hits were for extra bases. One home run last year. Extended that corner just a bit. One and two, the count. Line drive into center field. It's a base hit. What a great approach. Runner goes from first to third. Out front of him, the run will score, and the Braves lead it by a score of five to nothing on a lightning bolt off the bat of Evan. Look at this. Short, quick approach. Spun Peralta out of the way. Nothing that Fernandez and Roberts could do. The shortstop and the second baseman. Single and an RBI. A bluff pickoff move with Brooks DeRosa ready to hit. He grounded out to the second baseman back in the first inning. DeRosa 18 PG games in 2023. A 563 on base percentage. That limited time. 
and fouls that one off. And there were 10 hits and 10 walks. The rising eighth grader. Just a snap throw down to third. The runner was taking off, moved up on a pitch into the dirt, but that's a stolen base. He had already moved early. So a stolen base for Van Savage as he heads into second. Second and third. One away. Big chance for DeRosa now. One and two the count. So think about this. You're a young athlete and you're a prospect. One of those Mississippi-based Connor Griffin will be a first-round pick out of high school this year. These young athletes look up to one another. DeRosa listed him as the player he loves to watch most, who inspires him. His words are this, Connor Griffin inspires me as a person and an athlete to be the best version of myself. I look up to him and hope to see him again soon. Connor Griffin, good job by you. That's, that's a, lot of, a lot of a burden to wear, but he's earned it. That's outside, three and two the count. Then you get a 14-U a player like Brooks DeRosa, whose father's involved in Major League Baseball extensively. And yet this young man mentions one of his, one of his peers, just a couple years older. Swing and a miss. There was that same cut on the pitch that actually hit Kalen Frederick, but it worked out with effect against Brooks DeRosa. A little bit late life, and you can see he missed his spot. Yandy had set up inside that pitch, ran outside but it had all the effect that was needed for Peralta. Pretty good pitch, but it's called outside. Evan Litsky struck out back in the second inning. Do it over the count to Litsky. Primary left-handed pitcher. That one is in and off the plate. Also a really good basketball player. Team won the regional championships. They went undefeated on the hardwood. And this is an AB student as well. Really good in the classroom. Three and one the count. Ball four. Bases are loaded. Evan said something that, that made me laugh. Show of hands, how many of you out there are parents? You'll get this if you're a parent. If you're a parent of a teenager or used to be, I asked Evan, beyond baseball, what's something you're passionate about? One word he put, sleeping. Passionate about sleeping, which A, means he has a very busy life. B, means he's growing daily, moment by moment. He put sleeping. By the way, with the uh, laughing, so much so that he's crying laughing emoji right next to it. Isaiah Kander doubled, walked, scored a couple of runs. Isaiah's had a really good day. Kandor pitched earlier today, a couple of scoreless innings in a 13 to nothing victory. On the ground, back to a knee, flip to second base in time for the out. It's Roberts to Fernandez on a 4-6 put away. One run is added in this one. Some timely hitting being delivered by Evan Van Savage. A line drive right back up the middle in our game of the week through three. Brave scout team leading Dinger's Elite 5-0.
Perfect Games Game of the Week. And we want to remind all of you as we welcome you back to East Cobb. It's Roku TV. It's channel 237. It's the big TV. Most of you stream your content, your live channels through Roku, and you've done a good thing by doing so. On channel 237, make it a favorite. Make sure to find us on Roku TV 24-7, 365 documentaries, features, 65 live games last year. We're going to top that mark this year. Watch it all day, every day, all year long on Roku TV. We love it if you have the app, but also watch us on Roku TV. Perfect Game TV, the home of amateur baseball. Peeking in on a gorgeous Georgia day here at the East Cobb Complex for our Perfect Game Game of the Week alongside our entire production team, which is in Georgia, in Brooklyn, in Orange, California, and here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're glad to be sharing baseball with all of you as Austin Downey for the Dingers Elite Team. Dingers in those gray uniforms. They've got a handful of really sharp designed uniforms. They have that late 70s, early 80s Braves look. Speaking of the Braves, looks like a, a new man on the mound as Biondo will move on to the mound. Daniel Biondo will pitch now. Davis moves over and will play third base. Kander, Kandor is moving to shortstop. Austin Dowdy leads it off. First pitch is high. And Litschke is at first. It's pulled to the right side, and then Vaughn moves to second. Hopefully we got all that for you correctly. Those of you family members watching at home, coaches, even a scout or two taking a look at some talented athletes. That one's up, up and away. Two balls and one strike the count. Five to nothing, this Braves team is leading it. Three and two the count. Nice little comebacker. Dowdy a good student. 3.5 GPA. 19 times. He's won a PG All Tournament Award. It was a pretty approach, but he fouls it off. Dowdy had to battle through some hamstring injuries last year. Wasn't able to run as fast. Sometimes barely run at all. Said. While my legs betrayed me, my mind got a lot stronger. I learned a lot more about the game as he spoils that pitch up and away. Really good baseball IQ that he added to last year. Can play just about anywhere. He doesn't mind it at all, Austin Dowdy. Pitcher two. Well, he's a tough at bat. Three and two the count. Next pitch will be number nine. Biondo's fastballs thus far, 75 to 79 miles an hour. Hang in there and drive it. Drive it toward the alley in right center field. Have it drop in for a base hit. Pitch number nine was a base hit. That was a heck of an at-bat. Boy, that was pretty. You couldn't flatten that swing out more, could you? And he earned it. Now, he saw all fastballs, but he earned that base hit. Spoiled some good pitches. Not pretty, just poking it foul, poking it foul. And so now Don Fernandez, after the nine pitch at bat and base hit, was blocked up by Rossi behind the plate. I worked for five years with Mark Grace. Those of you who don't know who he was, he had more hits than anyone in Major League Baseball in the 90s. He was my analyst. And I was the voice of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he always reminded me about hitters. 
Dolphins. That's a good pitch, one and one. And it ties into what Dowdy just did. He said, whenever a hitter picks up a base hit, no one will ever talk about, if it was a lengthy at bat, the ugly spoiling of pitches that he did to stay alive. The stay alive foul ball, the stay alive close pitch that he takes. He said, but that's really what hitting's all about. And, and boy, boy, if ever didn't Austin Dowdy live out the words of Mark Grace by doing just that. That was really a fun at back. Gracie would have liked that one. One and two, the count. Don popped up to the third baseman back in the second inning. Miguel and Alejandra, his parents, and for his younger sis, Samantha. Two and two, the count. Inside corner, breaking ball, that strike three, a backwards K. To Fernandez. That's says heading toward the thigh, then takes a left turn, and it froze him. Nice job getting on top of that pitch. It's a classic karate chop. It's not one where you break your wrist at the last minute. That's one where your hand is on the side of that baseball and just throw it as hard as you can. Logan Peralta is pitching now. He grounded out to short back in the second inning. Logan did not go around on that pitch in the dirt. Logan, a really good catcher. Certainly he's shown himself as a pitcher. Art and Elaine, his parents. One and one the count. One started inner half and rode in. Good life. And a pitch that was 78 miles an hour. Georgia State Championship for both of these teams, their second game of the day. Two and one the count. 25 team event. Each team earns the opportunity for two pool games and then break it out into single elimination bracket play. Top seeds move on to that gold bracket. Three and one the count. This event, 20, 28 graduates or younger or born on or after May 1st, 2009. Three and two. Come on back. Yep, that got the play. Went up and got a pitch. Pounds it out front of the plate. Isaiah Kandor, who had moved over to play shortstop, turns that one into an out. And you see a good middle infielder in Kandor make this play. It wasn't just a, a couple of years ago that we saw in that very same spot, Tamar Johnson, who played in this event. He's one of the draft picks that came through this event. Kem Collier played in this event a couple of years back. Ty Pete, who was a Mariners draft pick this past year, a comp pick. Yeah, all told, 17 players have played in this event. It was born in 2019 that have gone on to professional baseball. Here's Holden Mears. Mears singled back in the second inning, the center fielder.
Holden loves Michael Harris. Attacking the baseball in the outfield, having fun. That a guy like that, as he's in the hole now, 0-2, has inspired me to play with even more energy and have fun. You're playing with this competition, there are challenges. There's work that goes into it. You gotta be a good student too, sharpen the mind, but I think this is the best time, right? This is, should be anyway. The, the, the best time of all the work you put in is when you're out here. Standing on this diamond, family and friends on the sidelines, those that love you, and this is where you should have fun. And it's fun to hear that Mears is looking at a guy like Michael Harris and learning to enjoy his time out there because, gosh, having covered Michael extensively as a perfect game alum, he had fun. He kind of, it was interesting. He stood a little bit on the fringes as a prospect. Wasn't always invited to every top event. Boy, has he become such a special player. Class of 2019. Waves over the top of that one. They'll turn it into an out with the flip there. So Biondo comes on, does a nice job on the mound, keeps his team in a spot where they're pretty comfortably on top, but they'll tell you very clearly, we would love to add on. Look at this little change up at home plate. Dying going into the plate. Pretty swing as well from Austin Dowdy, who earned himself a Mark Grace like base hit, five to nothing, middle of the fourth. Carl Garcia coaches a lot of talented players, select festival athletes, three of them on this roster, prospects, ranked players. But I put him right there under the microscope. Introduce, as a coach and a scout, your son, Leo Garcia. And here is what Coach Carl said. Dad's perspective, um, a hardworking kid, loves the game. Um, our, our family's from the Dominican Republic, so he's got that DNA. He's a grinder. Um, just a, a, a great kid, a great teammate, and uh, and um, we'll we'll practice five days a week. I have to pull him. I have to say no sometimes. Um, loves people. Um, he's 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 going to be just fine. It's kind of weird talking as a dad, um, but um, he's going to be just fine. He's um, he's a great kid. I, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be his dad. Love that answer. That one skied to the right side. Leo was hitting while Dad was talking about him. And he flied out into very shallow center field. Here we go. Be aggressive. Let's do it. He really can play the position. And yeah, I put Dad under the gun. I want to hear you talk about Son. And boy, did he smile. It was great to connect with him this week. Again, you can hear both coaches on tomorrow's MLB round trip with Perfect Game on MLB Network Radio following Sunday Night Baseball. We're the only show on that network devoted to amateur baseball, the only one. For more than a half decade, we have been honored to produce that show. Dominic Rossi, another left-handed hitting catcher. We know we like those, don't we, as that one's high and outside. We we're talking about the inspiration of Michael Harris to second provides for athletes the fun that he shows out on the field in the last half inning. How much Holden Mears had learned from him. He's a 2019 grad. I can remember Michael pitching a lot. 
really being known as a pitcher. He's a Texas Tech commit. Was the number seven left-handed pitcher in the country, Michael Harris II, is ranked by perfect game. As that one misses inside. Thomas Davis drove in a run. He also grounded out. Davis with a, a high-end skill set. That quick bat through the zone, shooting the hole. And for Davis, what was a great 2023 is turning into a very strong 2024 as well. Davis playing in 19 perfect game events last year. And on base, hovering around 400. And Michael Harris was local. He went to Stockbridge High School. Left-handed pitcher, left-handed hitter. He was just past 18 when he graduated high school. Was going to go to Texas Tech. As a matter of fact, when you visit Perfect Games, Michael Harris, the second page, the first video you will see is Michael Harris pitching at Perfect Games National Showcase. Michael Harris, who, by the way, when he gets on the mound, threw 93 miles an hour as a pitcher. So, yes, Mr. Mears, you're looking up to a good one as Mears plays center field out there right now. And we enjoyed watching him play at PG events for the Breakthrough Series for Marquise Grissom's Baseball Academy for the Georgia Bombers. Runner on the move, throw down, pretty throw, but he's in ahead of it with a head first fly. Leo out there pinch running for the catcher. Picks up the stolen base. And that's ball four. Five to nothing the score. A couple of runners on. Micah Vaughn twice today has grounded out. We're going to visit a conversation. Let's see if we will see a change. Matthew Hayes, by the way, had a chance to come in. It's good to see Hayes out there. Hayes is playing third base for the Dingers team. Number 77 on that jersey as he taps Peralta, heads back to his spot. Two outs on the ground. Five to nothing, the number. The snap throw, trying to sneak in there behind him. And a nice job corralling things by Don Fernandez as that throw actually from Gandy came in on a hop. Good shot of Don working to keep Garcia close. Right there in the bottom of your screen. Line drive, base hit, right field. One run will score, going first to third aggressively out front is Davis. As that one trickles away all the way to third, hurrying around goes Vaughn. Two runs come on down. Split the gap, hit it hard, seven to nothing the score. The Atlanta Braves scout team on top. What a gorgeous of hitting approach. Scolded that ball into right field. Ended up skipping all the way to the wall once it got by Holden Mears and far enough away once it skipped by to allow both those runs to score and have Micah Vaughn go all the way around to third base. Trying to drop a squeeze down there. He was on the move down the line was Micah Vaughn. Looking to do everything they can to score that eighth run. Now, some of you might have raised an eyebrow and thought, wait, why, why force that run in? It's popped up to the right side. There is a run rule. And it is in effect. Although you'd like to see it be pushed past this way. 
hit a line drive into left field. You don't have to do a squeeze. Hit it like that. That's what happened with Biondo back in the first, and it drove in a run. Instead, he gives the strike away on a foul ball, then ends up coming back. Peralta doesn't, getting a big strikeout. And this is why it's big. You want more opportunities, if you're the dingers, to hit. That's, that's the bottom line. But there is an eight after five rule. So if you were to get one more run, if you're the Braves, and get those three outs, you've saved pitching, and you're on to the next. To the right side. Gobbled up. They will keep it at seven to nothing. A couple of opportunities for the dingers. A triple with a pair of RBIs from Micah Vaughn. All the way to the wall it went. Leo was out front. He scored easily. Thomas Davis right behind him. Turned things loose. The Atlanta Braves scout team. They lead it 7-0. Dingers Elite Buford, Georgia, the Atlanta Braves scout team. Stars of our game of the week. Glad to have you back. We had a chance to talk with Nick Dowdy for our MLB Network radio show, which will debut tomorrow night after the Sunday night baseball game on Sirius XM. His thoughts as we sneak a peek on the current state of Georgia travel ball. Things have changed tremendously over the years, and uh, Georgia's become one of the top you know, places to play. Um, I mean, you see it every weekend at PG. I mean, there's players from all over the country and they're coming here. And our players in this area are seeing, you know, the different type players from all around and knowing they got to work harder, you know, eat better, get bigger, all of those good things, you know, that come along with it. Um, but they see it every weekend and it's a huge benefit, you know. Yeah, big benefit. It used to be if you go back a generation as John Jang takes this opportunity to hit. The 2028 left handed bat. Johnny from Buford. Danielle Middle School. Dreams of Georgia Tech someday. That one dives outside. Johnny takes outside, three and two the count. His dad is Peel Su Jang, and his mom is Ia Li Chung. He's an only child. Swing and a miss, down he goes on strikes. Really good tennis player, too. I mean, really strong tennis skills. Came up empty this time. Loves to cook, by the way, when he's at home, Johnny. Love that. Love that. Santiago Molleda gets the call to hit. Number 61, he's a catcher by trade. That one is high and inside. Good life on that one, running right under the hands. Really good pitch. One and two the count. Mo 
Noriega takes outside. He's from Duluth. Just went past his 15th birthday. Breaking ball. That's strike three. A couple of quick outs. Both of them on strikeouts. Come on, Cole. Yeah, that's a snapdragon. And they got a good hitter. Santiago last October played in the 14U Fall Georgia State Championship and was good. He was an all-tournament team member. He had four hits in that event, three walks. Got on base at a 778 clip. So I was glad to get an opportunity to watch him hit. Unfortunately, coming up empty that time, but a bright future for Santiago. Back to the top of the order. Cole Roberts reached in the first inning. Beyondo loving that curveball, isn't he? I don't blame him. It's a good one. The catcher with that true arm. Nice high arm angle. Well, he's a little bit below the true catcher slot when he gets up on the mound because you can see that late life on the pitch. That's a good look at the mechanics. Let's look from behind home plate. Everything's strong for and solid mechanically. That breaking ball has popped up to the right side. Let's take a peek. What are we seeing? 78, 79 miles an hour on the fastball. The curveball, 64 to 66. Kind of had all of us sit up on our chair with these two strikeouts. Make it three strikeouts, all with that snapdragon curveball. They used to call it a good old. We know you found us, and maybe you found us on your PC if you've heard about this broadcast. We need you to just go ahead and join us all the time. Download the app, the PG app. Now, you can watch us on Roku, and that's the big thing we want to pass along on Roku Channel 237, but you need the app. You need it for your phone, you need it for your tablet, and you need it for your smart TV. There's your QR code. Go ahead and grab it and download the app, Perfect Game TV. The home to amateur baseball, 24-7, 365 on Roku TV, or you can go ahead and grab the app. Looks like Mr. Pluff is going to take the, take the rock and roll. The right-hander. Cooper with an opportunity, and we keep an eye on the scoreboard. He has a quick conversation with his new catcher who got the call. We saw him hit. Moyeda, Santiago Moyeda is back behind the plate. Evan Ben Savage. One and oh, the count. Cooper also had a single as a hitter. 
as he works on the mound back in the third inning. Good looking fastball sinks into the zone. One and one on Ban Savage. Evan, a single, a stolen base, an RBI, and a walk as well. Well, that's heavy, isn't it? It's almost being played on a backhand by Moyeda. Super athletically stands over the rubber and goes to work as that one is rolled foul up the third baseline. This Atlanta Braves scout team with some support. A new member of the perfect game team. Special assistant to our president with perfect game. Ryan Klesko played in 1800 major league games. Jeff Francoeur also a supporter of this team, the former longtime Brave and one of the voices of the Braves, one of the voices of baseball on national TV. So Klesko and Francoeur, who combined for nearly 3,200 games and close to 450 home runs, a part of this Atlanta Braves scout team. The 3-2. Bouncing ball. Back behind the mound and shallow short. Fernandez vacuums it up. He's done a nice job out there today. Don turns it into an out. When you throw a pitch that sinks like that, it's tough, it's tough to get underneath that baseball. Brooks DeRosa. Grounded out, struck out. This team looking for base runners, seeing if they can force that eight-run rule and prepare for their next games. As DeRosa takes a breaking ball and pops it foul. One and one the count on Brooks. It was a 13 to nothing win earlier today against the Warriors Baseball Academy for the Atlanta Braves scout team. Two and one. It was a hard fought 7-5 loss for the Dingers elite against the Warriors Baseball Academy. Hitters count two and one. DeRosa tied up with that heavy sink. Hustling up the line, Matthew Hayes, the third baseman, with a nice play to erase the hard charging Brooks DeRosa. Yeah, that's that swing when you go to swing and it's almost a check swing and it's uncomfortable. Cooper's movement is dynamic, fun. One to watch. Let's see what he can do with Lichke here. Another one on the ground. Like clockwork, isn't it? Remember a couple of innings ago, that squeeze attempt to get it to eight to nothing? Kudos to the Dinger squad for pushing back and keeping that runner at third and earning themselves more at bats. Here in our perfect game, game of the week, the 14U Georgia State Championship. It's the Atlanta Brave Scout team on top by a score of seven to nothing.
that's where he comes from. That's his perspective. He is in his shoes with that view. And it just challenges. Look, he's challenging himself. And then he's challenging everybody else. And I think he feels like his team. And I know the Dingers are big on practice as well. They have a wonderful, massive facility, outdoor fields. But I think the, the call out there a little bit is for the team that just plays and doesn't really want to work out, especially at this 13 and 14 new age group where, you know, you're not on the high school team. You're not in high school yet, and you're trying to simulate a high school season. Interesting thoughts, very honest thoughts, and transparent thoughts. Like them. Carl Garcia, the coach of the Atlanta Braves scout team. By the way, Kalen Frederick's going to get a chance to pitch just a little bit. He's working out on the mound, so we'll enjoy watching that. Cooper Pluff, who has shown this crazy heavy sinker, just yikes as he has pitched. Takes a strike over the outside corner. He put, I told you in his pronunciation in the bio, P-L-U-F-F, -F, and I, it had me checking back in on site just to make sure that it wasn't Ploof with the L-O-O-F, P-L-O-O-F, and we have confirmed that it's Pluff, like rough. And Cooper is on. And a quick call of time. Seven to nothing is the score. And I've done now over the last couple of years enough of these games to enjoy teams that scrap and stay alive in what could be a run rule situation and earn the extra at bats. And that's really what it's all about. You play in these games for reps. You play in these games to play, to grow. And it's kind of stealing what Carl Garcia, who you can see in the shot right now, talks about. that you want to get as many at-bats as you can, as many reps as you can, then get in as much practice as you can. So we'll see if the Dingers can maybe even put a, put a run in that score column and then keep it right at 7 nothing. get their maximum of bats uh, avoid the, the run rule. And funny things happen if you do score a couple of runs. Then all of a sudden it's not about that. It's about let's see if we can get in this game. Quick visit. Done talking with Kalen. A couple of long, lean athletes dueling now. There's Griffin Treadwell. Treadwell, been on twice today. Despite that massive strike zone, he's walked twice. One and oh, the count to Griffin. Glad you've spent a portion of your Saturday with us. And we trust wherever you're going to take in games from college campuses to Little League to the big leagues that you enjoy them. Runners on the move, getting aggressive. Boy, every run's so important. And a stolen base for Cooper. Way inside and off the plate, two and one the count. Six, four. up that frame, doesn't he, in the batter's box? Ouch! And you could hear that. Oof. And the shoulder blades in the back of the back. Let's see if they can, after that pain subsides, take advantage again. He's reaching back. That's got to hurt. Watch this. Squares him up right there below the shoulder blades. Ouch! Alonzo, big chance, looking for the first run. He pops that one up, back of second base, shallow center field, trickling back over, under, out is Micah Vaughn, the second baseman. Put a nice route on that baseball. And making it clear that with Leo Garcia, who was in center field, Evan Van Savage now is out there. He called them off very nicely. Leo played last inning out there at center field. One big out, one and oh, the count to Andrew Yi. Both outs for Yi have been in the air today. Trying to grab an extra base, heading to third, and in there, around the tag. 
Well, that's a gutsy call. Isn't it down 7-0? Trying to grab that bag, doing everything you can to get a run. Huge jump, though. Good pitch to throw. A little swim move around the tag. I see you, Cooper. That was great. Two and zero, the count. Runners on first and third. The Dingers' elite squad trying to scratch out their first run. He was 0 for 2 in the earlier game today against Warriors Baseball Academy. Yeah, he last year had a lot of reps and it was good for him. 3 and 0 the count. He played in 54 perfect game games. He got on base at a 500 clip, had a 980 OPS. More walks than strikeouts in 2023 at PG tournaments. Runner on the move, drawing the throw, and he sticks at third. It is a stolen base. No, it's ball four, that's why. All right, things look really different now. Just one out, base is loaded. And a quick conversation. Kalen. With one out, gives way. There was some work in the bullpen down that left field line. And Leo's going to throw some. While Leo gets loose, we'll step aside. Seven to nothing the score, but good for the Dingers scrapping back in this one. Let's see if they can come up with a big hit right around the corner. This is Perfect Games, Game of the Week. Last year, he pitched 18 and a third innings at PG events. He struck out 22. So Leo, rock and roll with that funky, uncomfortable arm angle. That's strike one. Yikes. Base is loaded. 0 and 1 the count. Base is full. No one's fouled off. 0 and 2 the count. The runner on first, Andrew Yee walked. Griffin Treadwell was hit by a pitch. Cooper Pluff walked as well. Austin Dowdy had an amazing at bat back in the fourth inning. A nine pitch at bat ended up with a single. Here he goes again. That dastardly Dowdy. Pitchers hate it. Spoiling good pitch after good pitch until he gets his. Let's see how Leo can counter. Working in those Air Jordan spikes, those high tops. The 0-2. Down off the end of the bat. Up, leaping. Unable to make the play. 
Heading back to the bag. They'll turn that one into an out, but 7-1 is the score. Another great at bat for Dowdy. He spoiled a two-strike pitch. Cooper Pluff comes around to score. Nice, easy, pretty, pretty approach. Oh, man. I know I'm aging myself when I say Rod Carew for our older baseball fans. He is a Hall of Famer. It's just that nice, easy approach. I trust my hands. I trust my knowledge of the strike zone. And I'm not trying to do too much. There is some old soul in that at-bat from Dowdy, and his last two at-bats have been a pleasure to watch. Treadwell, by the way, got frozen a bit. Wasn't sure what was going to happen with that. Maybe thinking that... Candor would catch that on a line, so he was, in the end, out at third. So runners are on first and second, and Yee and Dowdy. Turned out to be a big out if you think about it. Really big out instead of bases loaded. It was still just one out. It could have made things interesting. 3-0 and oh the count. Three balls and one strike to count to Don, who popped out to the third baseman, struck out looking. The field one at East Cobb looks beautiful today. During the pandemic, perfect game, really working with the East Cobb program and returfing the entire complex. Can't wait to, to visit one of my favorite times, leaving the Scottsdale, Arizona studios and going to East Cobb. Leaning just a little bit too much creates a rundown. With the tag, that creates the third out. Garcia comfortable. Nice and easy and athletic. And turns that one into an out. Seven to one. And that brave scout team. With the victory over Dinger's Elite. That'll do it.